This is Sandbanks Provincial Park. Okay, so we are here, we're all set up. This is Sandbanks Provincial Park. This is site 649. Go fast. <laughs> they steal either stuff in your trailer if you don't lock it up, which I always suggest. I like to say I trust people in this world, but you know, you, you might not always be able to, so. So this guy here, yeah. pulling his trailer is having a hard time yeah. passing through. And I've noticed a few people had a hard time because see this white pickup truck? So what's the temperature? Um, 5,000, 513.4. Wow. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Outdoor Canucks. We are going, doing a little fall camping. We're going to, where are we going? Point Farms Provincial Park. It's not fall. It's not fall, I know. It's officially not fall, it's still September and mid-September. So it's not, yeah, it's not till next week, but for all intents and purposes, it's fall because the summer is unofficially over. So we're going there. Uh, we got a, a different wide angle look. Tell me if you like it. We got the sun coming right in on us. That's why we have the visors going on here. But uh, what we're going to talk about in this episode, as well as show you around the park and stuff like that. Don't worry about being upside down. She's looking at the camera. Um, what we're talking about in this episode is camping etiquette in a provincial park. It doesn't have to be a provincial park. It could be any park, any kind of, when you go camping in any kind of national park or, or any kind of private park or anything. Camping etiquette. Let's learn the do's and don'ts about camping etiquette. We did something like this last week, the do's and don'ts. But this one's more etiquette. Uh, how to be nice to somebody or be nice to people around you as you camp. Let's talk. So this is our setup. I'm going to get into our setup in a little bit, but I want to remind you, what we're talking about in this video is camping etiquette. Basically, the do's and don'ts, more the don'ts of what you probably shouldn't do. Actually, probably more the do's. The do's. I'm not going to get into what you don't do, because I did a video about that last week. What we're going to talk about in this one is things we want you to do uh, to just, you know, have it easier for the next person that camps or while you're camping. Uh, the people that are around you that are camping next to you and in front of you and behind you and stuff like that. Just camping etiquette, things that make, if everyone was to do, it would make things go easier for everyone. So we're gonna get to that in a little bit. Let me just show you the setup we have here. That's our trailer right there, as you can see. And uh, it looks really weird because we have our friends, uh, Mel and uh, Allison, they came uh, camping with us. And that is their truck. And I don't know if you can see, that is, where is it? can't do it in reverse. That is their uh, tent that they have in the back of their Tacoma. They have a Tacoma just like us. And uh, they got the clam there too. And I'll show you the clam in a little bit. But we're both on one site. There's a story behind that. Uh, I sort of, long story short, I sort of messed up the reservation and we were supposed to have our own site. We were supposed to have that site right there. Reservations were messed up. I'm not sure yet whether it was my fault or uh, Parks Ontario's fault. I'm gonna look into that. So luckily, these guys were just camping here with their truck, so we were able to share this site. There's exactly six, everything worked out perfectly. If this was Darren and Tammy, or Dan and Lynn, we wouldn't be here, we would have to turn around and go back home. So it worked out. They've got a cool, let me turn the camera around and let me show you their setup in their truck. So this is a Toyota Tacoma, just like ours, it's 2018. Um, they've got it all decked out in here, and it did a good job, and then they've got this, um, back of the truck bed tent i think it's called is what whatever it's called the company's called napier uh uh can i show in is is it clean enough to show in, in if i open the maybe not How awesome was the last one? it's a bit of a disaster then. okay oh I'll, I'll wait then i'll wait Later. i'll make the bed and then you can look at it <laughs> so we'll take a look at it in a little bit let me just show you around uh let me see if i can zoom out here so 
as you can see, it just you put your tailgate down. It's a regular six and a half foot bed with the tailgate down. You've got eight feet, and uh, it just straps down to the side here, and it goes in. And they've got a, a custom mattress actually that actually goes around the. Uh, wheel wells that are in the back of the tray here and I'll show you that when we open it up But as you can see just like a regular tent. It's got the poles. It's got a fly uh, And it's got a little little vestibule here and wait until I, I open it up and show you like the room in here is amazing Definitely Gotta check it out. Okay, so I guess this would be first one part of the etiquette rule and I've never seen this before So this is very interesting that I saw it uh, And what it is if I zoom in and show you closely see that that's a staple and you think, okay, well, how is there just a staple in a picnic table? By the way, this is a picnic table. Uh, and then I look and I see another staple here. And then there's another one over there. That one's like really, really high up. I don't know if you can see that. So what, and then there's another one over there. So there's at least four or five, probably even more. I haven't gone through the whole entire table. So what has happened, obviously, somebody put a, a picnic tablecloth, like you see uh, on most of these uh, campsites, people bring their own picnic tables. We go through two or three of them a year because they're cheap and they're plastic and everything. You use them and you wipe them off and everything, but sometimes you have to replace them. So someone brought it and instead of using those little, uh, you know, those clips you can buy at the dollar store or the camp store. They're really, really cheap. They're little metal clips that are reusable and they just clip underneath uh, for your tablecloth. Instead of using that, I guess someone didn't have it or they didn't use, use it. So they took a staple gun and they stapled their tablecloth on, which... Fine, fair enough. These staples don't look like household staples. They look like regular wood staples. So something tells me that whoever did this does it all the time to have to bring their staple gun with them. They probably do it all the time. Which, you know, once again, it's, it's wood and it's little tiny staples. It's not going to damage the wood. But the etiquette rule in this is if you're going to do stuff like that, and this is just an example of one thing, but if you're going to do something like that alters and, you know, maybe arguable whether it's altering the actual use of this but if you're going to do something then remove it afterwards like i mean they just left it in there now if someone puts their hand over this they don't have a tablecloth it could, this could cut them or 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 scratch them or some of that uh, if someone else puts their tablecloth on it now it could rip the tablecloth because or this will be little bumps up like this it's just inconvenience it, it's probably very quick to put the staples in to keep the tablecloth down but I think it's equally just as quick to, when you take the tablecloth off, when you're ready to leave, take the staples out. This is just, in my opinion, inconsiderate and you're not thinking of your fellow campers or your the campers that are gonna be here next and you don't think of what they're gonna have to do. So just be considerate of what you do. It's like green chili. <laughs> right. Are you ready? <coughs> oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Oh, uh, it took my breath away there. Smells good though. Oh yeah, it be Oh, it smells really good. So when you're camping, as you can see, you can do this. Uh, they've uh, these guys have a nice Coleman little uh, camp grill, and uh, they're they're cooking breakfast like they're at home. Look at this. <laughs> and this is a secret recipe that you got from one of your friends. Yeah, neighbor. Yeah. Mmm, smells good. Amazing. Yes, it does. And as you can see, they are. Oh, you can't see it here. But I'll back up. They are in their clam. This thing is so awesome. It, it's called the clam. Look at the labels right on the top there. It's called the clam. This sets up in like, Ali, what, 30 seconds? Yeah, 30 seconds, I would say. Yeah, it's amazing. I've been trying to get Darren to buy one of these with me. Because uh, they're like $500 or $400. <laughs> I, I forget how much they are, but they're, they're, they're pretty pretty. Yeah, they, they probably come down since... Yeah, <laughs> they they probably come down in price. Maybe have, yeah, maybe have gone up. But uh, this is camping at its best. So how is it? It is delicious. delicious. So good. Okay. I see. Um, Julie crashed your breakfast party here. <laughs> it's quite alright. Yeah. So this is inside the uh, tent, and as you can see, the mattresses. <laughs> like I mean, the ground starts or the bottom of the bed starts here and the mattress is up here so what is it probably like 12 inches thick oh yeah oh yeah at, le sure. at least 12 inches thick and you can see they've got a little uh, light there a little netting for your uh, personal belongings you can hang up there and you've got windows this whole thing is a fly it's a mesh fly that you can zip up and then you've got the other uh fly that you can put on top afterwards too which is right here so you can do both 
for when you go to sleep. But it's got nice big windows and it's got the fly to uh, the bug light. keep you uh, out of the elements. And they, yeah, they've got a bug light right here. It has nothing to do with the tent. They didn't come with a tent. But as you can see, like you've got walls here. So it works as a ledge. You can put stuff along the ledge there. Pretty cool. And of course, a little pouch for personal belongings, just like any regular tent. And as you can see, as I back up, that is it all in the back of a back of a pickup truck. I mean, these are common. These aren't anything that most people haven't seen before, but it's just interesting to see it in this kind of setup. And you're off the ground. That's the main thing. You're off the ground. You're away from the uh, animals and the bugs and stuff like that, if that's what you prefer. So another etiquette part of uh, camping. These people just left their site. Uh, they're just next door to us. We're over there. And they just left their site. And as you can see, A, they left it um, burning, which more of a safety issue than an etiquette thing. Um, you should put your fire out before you leave. Uh, you shouldn't leave an unattended fire. But they also left garbage in there. As you can see, there's unburnt wood here, or it's half burnt. And then they leave paper, as you can see over there in the corner there, and some more paper. Once again, etiquette. You want this, you don't want people to come and have to clean this out. Uh, you could call the park. I know sometimes some parks will come and they'll clean it out for you if you call them, but they don't normally come around uh, in between uh, uh, campers. So, you know, say the person that comes to this site next, they come in the middle of the night and they, uh, you know, unpack and set up and everything and they want to start a fire and it's dark. Now they've got to contend with this before they start a fire in the dark. Uh, getting all this garbage out, putting it to the side, whatever they have to do with it. Uh, don't do that. Just for for one, don't burn something and just leave it. And for two, don't leave any garbage in your campfire. That's another etiquette rule. So what did we find here? Look at this. We found Not this sure. when we came to the site. Oh, wait, did the tooth just fall down? Oh, the, the tooth? The teeth are falling. The teeth. The teeth are falling oh, out. Right here. A little bit, oh, but this yeah, is a yeah. skull oh. of an animal that was a uh, once belonged to this park and now his skull still belongs to the park. Look at that is so cool. Inside his nose. That's his yeah, this is nasal cavity. His tooth just fell out, one of the one of his back oh, teeth. Oh, that's so cool. Molars. Look at the teeth. And these are where his the eye teeth. sockets are, the front teeth. Now, I guess the canines are here. Oh, that would have been so and most cool. of the teeth sort of fell, yeah, fell out, but you can see the eye sockets, the cranium. Oh, put, put that tooth back. Um, and it's so old, you can tell, because it's got some moss nice. on it here. But we want to know what it is. We think it's, it's one of two things. If you know at home, let us know. But we think Something. it's either a small oh. raccoon or a skunk. It's the only thing we can think of. Oh, but if, skunk. But if you if you know better, and you, you, you think what it, see that's the hole for where his um, Spine. uh, spinal cord comes comes out of. Or oh, it's that attached. looks like tribal phobia. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Look. Amazing look. things you find in nature. And the kids love this and it's an educational thing for the kids. That's why, you know what? Camping with the kids is a must if you want to expose your kids and your family to stuff like this. There you go. I got it out. Are you TikToking as I'm talking, Abby? <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Beast. ShopMrBeast.com. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, what's it going? Shop Mr. Beast. Thank you. Okay. We have two hammocks and we never get to use them all the time. Sometimes, some parks we do. Some parks, uh, they just have like the way it's situated with the trees. We can only put one hammock up. Like in this case, we've got one big tree here and a tree there. So we had the one hammock up. We're like, you know, we need the second hammock. And we're looking around, looking around. Can't find anywhere to put it. And then this one right here, she has the brilliant out of the box idea to put two hammocks on top of each other. I think it's a fantastic idea. So it's like a bunk bed hammock style. So we don't know how it's going to work. We have a, a, a ladder there that we're going to probably have to use to get into it because we're all short here. But we've got two hammocks on top of each other. Tell me that's never been done before. Okay, Abby's testing it out. Go ahead. Open this part up. There you go. Here you go. It's just like a regular hammock. What? She's going to yeah. scream. Okay. Yeah. You're good. You're good. Yep. Get in it. There you go. Move the ladder. Down. We'll worry about that afterwards. Actually, you know, you can probably jump from there, to be honest. Yeah, you're yeah. like Yeah. Yeah. Can you swing? Now, Julie, you go in the bottom one. Go in the bottom one. Oh, yeah. I was eating mine while I was getting in the hammock. There you go. Two people in two hammocks yeah, using yeah, you know. just one set of trees. Look at that. That is awesome. It was. Mom, what if I go upside down? <laughs> <laughs> now 
Josh is getting brave. <laughs> That's awesome. What's going on? So another part of uh, camping etiquette, it's a lot of uh, provincial parks now, or parks in general, are allowing you to bring your family pet. Like we got Fisher in there behind us and taking for a walk and a lot, of, a lot of places now have actually dedicated beaches, like pet beaches and off leash areas and stuff like that. When you're walking your dog and you're exercising your, your dog, always, just like you are at home, pick up after your dog, be a responsible dog owner. Don't leave, I know you think you're up, you know, in the in the woods or in the country or you're outdoors and you know, it's biodegradable and you don't need to pick up. You still need to pick up after your dog. Be courteous and considerate to the other people. Like we're on a hike, but even if you're not on a hike and you're at your campsite and your dog or even on the beach and your dog happens to use a washroom, pick up because other people have to walk there after you. The other time, the needles are so, so thin and it's almost fluffy like clouds. Oh. oh. See, it pays to uh, camp with a botanist or arborist. They don't put them on leashes and then they don't know if people are scared of dogs or if dogs aren't good with other dogs. So if your dog is not on a leash and mine is, he's going to run up to say hi to my dog and my dog's going to bite him because he's not good with other dogs. Yeah, well, well, the argument could be said that your dog, if it's not good with that dog, shouldn't be in an off-leash uh, Right, but area, I've got right? him on a leash, under oh, yeah, control. On a leash. Yeah, if the you. other dog is not on a leash and runs up to me, yep, that's not my fault. Yeah. They okay. don't have their dog under control. Yeah. And so from the beginning, if you're in a regular dog area, dogs are supposed to be on leash, two meters, in most provincial parks, unless it's a specific off-leash area. Exactly. What we find is that a lot of people think that their dogs are fine and even in the places where you're supposed to have them on the leash they don't they have them free which is fine if there's no other dogs and no other people that are scared of dogs but that's not always the case so it does bug us when we have dogs that are off leash in an area where they should be on leash and they come up to us to just to say hello i agree yeah no that's, that's a good tip for uh, dog owners yeah and you know it's all about consideration yep. and etiquette so another courtesy rule for provincial parks now this doesn't always apply but during COVID, and i don't know maybe they'll keep it after COVID is over and done with if it ever is is here's a sign it says uh, maximum number of people permitted two so always before you just i know it's hard sometimes but you just open the door and you just go in but check the signage because a lot of provincial parks are actually putting this on now and um you know the people inside they'll they'll advise you they won't kick you out but they'll tell you oh can you please wait outside but try to look at the sign this one says two. Uh, I've seen other signs that say three or four or five. So keep an eye on all these signages when you're at a provincial park, especially the washrooms too, the comfort stations. No so we're on our hike here and uh, these are the stairs and the kids are going to count how many steps there are and tell us at the bottom. We're going down them and uh, we're going to take you along and we're going to do a time lapse. Okay, we're coming to the end, and I think Quentin counted. I have to get the final count from him. But those are a lot of steps. Here comes the ladies. So you counted the steps, right? How many steps were there? 139. 139, exactly. You sure about that? Well, I think I might have lost a couple, but you guys <laughs> can count. No, I, I didn't count because I thought you were counting. Okay, we'll go with 139. If anyone's counted and watching this video, and it's not 139, comment below what the correct count is. But we'll go with 139. For a split second, no, it's like a Split second. Look at this view. She's windy. The dog so badly wants to go in there.
Okay, so camping etiquette number 62. <laughs> yes, I get it. We have our um, uh, power, what are they called? Outlet? No. Uh, power drill to help put our stabilizer jacks down. But when people come camping, they want to, uh, the tranquility and the quietness, especially in this radio freeze area. So maybe using the drill and when you have it on that setting where the, that torque setting where it makes that noise <laughs> might not be the best thing to do. That sound you heard there in the background, that's someone setting up their uh, trailer and putting down their uh, stabilizer jacks. Just, I'm not saying don't do it. This is a gray area one. I'm not saying don't do it, but just be conscious and uh, considerate of other people around you uh, when you do it and you use that setting on your uh, power drill. With the assistance of my hand model here, we have a grill, and you've seen this before, I'm sure, and that you can use uh, while you're cooking stuff open and op uh, over an open flame um, on the uh, fire pit here. So we just, all you do is there's a stake here, you hammer it into the ground nearby the fire pit and it swivels and you can swivel it in or out so you can tend to your food and prepare it and everything when you're ready to put it on you hold it right here if it's not too hot and put it right over the fire and then when the fire cooks it and everything you swing it back over here it'll take it off and you can adjust the height too from here so let's get some food and try it out so we've christened this uh fire grill and uh we've got some steaks <laughs> on there we're gonna put some okay. other stuff on there probably some burgers and stuff at and we got a nice fire with a nice uh hot base this uh grill also works for our, our what are these called again the cone Campfire s'mores, s'mores. s'mores. and made by melissa thank you very much <laughs> and and ali uh now these ones are different these ones are different than the one julie makes what's in this one mel these ones have dark chocolate chips, marshmallows, and salted caramel chips. You didn't tell me that. I would want one now. <laughs> In a chocolate waffle cone. So, Dan, <laughs> what, what's going on there? I think we tired the dog out, so he's passed out. Yes. He it, had a long day at the beach. That is a dog in your lap. <laughs> he's an amazing lap dog. Oh, yeah. Is that yeah. an ear? He's a heating blanket. Another good rule of etiquette when you're camping is check to see what time your checkout is because most provincial parks are 2 p.m. is your checkout and your check-in. Uh, so basically there's no in-between time, there's no like grace period, it's 2 p.m. Some private parks may be 10, 11, like we, we've been to different private parks where there are different times, but most provincial parks are 2 p.m. So try to adhere and plan yourself to be out by 10, sorry, by 2 or whatever time it is because the other people that have to come in, they won't have to wait for you. It's very, very inconsiderate that uh, people that you should delay other people enjoying their weekend or their uh, camping trip or their camping experience. It's the way they begin their camping trip, and if it begins on a negative note where they have to sit there and wait for you as you're uh, cleaning up because you slept in or something, like that, it's not considered. It's it's not good proper camping etiquette. Now. If there's a problem, like a mechanical problem with your trailer or something like that, or a medical problem where you can't get out on the time where you're supposed to check out on, talk to the park office, or if it's a private park, they usually have a park office or, or something, or even a warden at a provincial park. Talk to them, let them know, then maybe they can give you an extension, they can let the people coming in know, they can put a note on, the, on that file uh, saying that, you know, site 246 is gonna be uh, delayed, and they can let the people know so they, they don't have to um, come and actually find out that you're actually still there and it's past the deadline. So consider it to just like let the park know if, because you know things happen in, in life and, and you may just be in this one of those situations where you're delayed for um, reasons out of your control. So let the, let the park office know and uh, they can make some arrangements and let the other people know. Or they can even tell you, you know what, there's nobody coming in today after you so you can take your time. But at the end of the day, try to adhere to the time, plan yourself accordingly, so you can get out on time. Now this is how easy it is to take apart this clam and uh, disassemble it and pack it away. The girls are on the inside, they're doing it right now. We're not gonna speed this up at all, this is gonna be actual time. And this is how quick it is. 
No pressure, girls. No, nobody's looking. <laughs> Key is to get out of it before it fully collapses. Well, thanks. Yeah. Come on out. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Nice job. Oh my god. Look at that. Like from actually when it started to now, minus 10 seconds for being trapped inside, <laughs> it's apart and it collapsed and they just have to put it in the bag now. It's, what was that, like 25 seconds, yeah. 30 seconds? If that, shorter if I hadn't got You gotta get this clam. I, and you know what, this isn't even paid for. They actually bought it. This is not a sponsored ad. I've been wanting to get one of these for a while. And uh, What's it called? now I think it's, I'm convinced. It's called the clam by what company? And another courtesy tip, when you're ready to leave and you're ready to dump there at the dump st fill stations and you're waiting, when you're next in line, I, I might have mentioned this in the previous video, when you're next in line, get your stuff ready ahead of time. Pull this out, get your hoses, whatever you need, your, your elbows and attachments, and uh, get it ready and even move it up to the front so when your turn is, you can just hook up really quickly. Like this guy's leaving now, so I can just hook up really quickly. And there you have it, folks. That is just some etiquette rules when you're camping, just to abide by, follow. If you get into that habit of uh, just following these simple little rules, I, I don't even want to use the word rules, but these little tips of advice, uh, everyone will have a more enjoyable time when they come camping. And if the, everyone follows these little tips and advice, then when you come camping, if the previous people that came to your campsite or the pe people that are camping around you, do the same thing, then we'll all have a good time and it'll be a stress-free environment, which is why we all come camping, right? We want to be stress-free and we don't want to have to stress out about little things. I know it all depends on the individual, but for the most part, if you can make it stress-free, it's all better. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. It's actually Thanksgiving Monday, so people are packing up and, and you can see people leaving. But who shows up to our campsite? And I, I, I mean, I don't even have to tell you who they are. You, you know who they are. So we're here. We're all set up. This is the next day. We got in really late last night and it was getting dark and everything, so we didn't <laughs> film too much. But as you can see, let me uh, show you. It's a big, huge site. The, the great thing here at Oro, the sites are massive. And okay, as we're sitting down by the fire, ready to have a nice little drink and a uh, fire and everything like that, here is our next, uh, I guess, campfire recipe. And all you do is you dip the marshmallow in the... Look how tall I am, guys. Also, look at my pants. What? I'm about to fall off. Yeah, where are you? Where's your face? Right here. Just check out the changing leaves and the colors and stuff like that. Not the changing leaves. The leaves don't change. Actually, they do change. Whoa. This is our friend for the weekend. His name is Diggs. Hey Diggs, he is five months old, I think five. How old is he? Seven months. He's seven months old. Thank you for watching Outdoor Canucks. See you all in the next video. We're going camping. <laughs> hey folks, welcome back to Tesla. Oh, is it Tesla? <laughs> <laughs> Blooper. <laughs> Hey folks, welcome back to Outdoor Canucks, where uh, we're going to Point Farms Provincial Park this weekend. 